All right, it's official. Respawn fixed Apex ranked for season 13. So if you're not on Twitter or TikTok, which by the way, you should be following me on both of those. For some reason, you haven't seen the rank changes that are coming for season 13. This will be the video for you. But before we get into that, if you find any of this information helpful, drop a like on this video as it helps push the video onto more viewers. And I mean, it's completely free. But let's get right into these changes. So one of the most glaring things that people have noticed is the increased RP needed for each rank. Now many of grinders have expressed how much they enjoy these changes and how it now makes ranked skill based instead of just grinding and grinding and grinding without having to worry about deranking and just eventually getting a rank over time. But unfortunately for many of people that I've noticed in my TikTok comments, they really don't agree with this change right here. For some odd reason, many people believe that ranked is still supposed to be relatively easy. Even though if you look at games like Valorant and League of Legends, you'll notice that climbing through their ranks is not easy at all. And honestly, Apex was the only game that really had a majority of the players in each tier at the bottom of their rank. Most other games that have a rank system have a normal distribution within the rank. But there are other reasons as to why they increase the amount of RP needed for each rank and let's go ahead and get into those. So firstly, they increase the entry cost depending on your rank. As you'll see with this diagram right here, which the source will be in the description down below for any of you who are wondering where this information is coming from, the entry cost for a plat one player goes all the way up to 60. For comparison, the entry cost for platinum right now is only 36 and RIP to all you masters and pred grinders because the entry cost is 75 for you and it increases by five per thousand increase in your RP so let's say that you get to 20,000 RP you're talking about a hundred RP entry cost every time although this does cap out at 175 RP and honestly, this only makes sense that if you're going to increase the amount of RP needed for each rank, then you should also increase the entry cost as well. Because if you were to increase the RP needed for each rank without increasing the entry cost, then people would just be within that rank a lot longer. And if you were to increase the entry cost without increasing the RP needed, then people would derank a lot easier. Which leads into the second reason as to why they added this additional RP is because there is now going to be rank demotion. For any of you who are wondering how this is going to work basically if you are a plat player and you're at 8200 rp if you lose the game that you queue into then you won't lose any rp at all and this is because you have none to lose but you can only do that a total of three times where you have don't have an adequate amount of rp to lose after that third time then you will derank back down to gold and you'll be gold one and you'll be halfway through gold one. At first, I didn't like that it took three games in order to derank, but after thinking about it more, this is actually a much better idea. It gives you three strikes, basically. If you can't manage to have a positive game after those three strikes, then you're going to derank. And as someone in my TikTok comments was arguing, you're actually losing more RP if you derank after three games then instead of just having it three games negatively while also deranking into the next rank. Meaning that if you were in Diamond 4, you would lose 63 RP each time, which comes to a total of 189 RP. And honestly, this is not substantial enough and you're still going to be getting people who are hard stuck D4 or basically plat one players into your Diamond lobbies while you're trying to solo queue. This, I believe, is why they've made it so where you have a three game grace period to where if you lose all three of those games, then you are now back in the next rank, but 50% of the way there, because you now need to climb your way back to diamond. You need to prove that you belong in that diamond rank and that you can climb back to that rank. If you derank back to platinum and you can't climb there, then I'm sorry, you probably just didn't belong in diamond in the first place. So in my opinion, adding both the increased entry cost and the ranked emotion is justification to increase the amount of RP needed for each rank. But that isn't the only reason why they should increase this because they also removed the kill cap. That's right, for next season, you can frag out to your heart's content, but it isn't as cut and dry. So they claim that if you're placing in the bottom half of the lobby, then that should be considered a loss. So because of that, your KP will be only worth one RP all the way until 14th place. For 13th, 12th, and 11, your KP will now be worth five RP. And once you make it to 10th, your KP will be back to the usual RP per kill. From there, it only increases even further, all the way up to 25 RP per kill if you get a win. What this is doing is that it's essentially making people play smarter. If you take a stupid fight early on and it costs your team to lose in the bottom 10, then you deserve to have negative RP. But if you make it into the top 10, it's very likely that you'll be even somewhat close to being positive RP depending on your rank 
But if you manage to enter top 10 with already 5 KP, then you're already at a positive RP for the game if you are even if you're in Diamond 4 lobbies. Which is why it's essential to be trying to play for late game and to get late game kills. Fighting mid game only increases the ability for you guys to get third partied, which is what I broke down in my how to hit masters video tagged right here. Not only that, they added a form of team KP. So essentially any fight that you are not involved in, let's say you and your other two teammates are each involved in 1v1s and you all win your 1v1, you will get partial credit for both of your teammates kills. Which if this is a team based game, that is how it should be. If you get your kill and everyone else gets their kill, as a team you should be rewarded. But since you didn't actually contribute directly to that kill, you still get partial credit for the kill which is more opportunities for RP. So if you add to the fact that there is no kill RP cap anymore, additionally, you're also gonna be getting partial RP for each of your teammates kills. You're talking about a pretty sizable increase in RP that you can get from each game, especially if you win. Now it does say that base value of each kill is worth increasingly, increasingly less down to a minimum. And honestly, no one has been able to really explain how this is going to be directly implemented. For that, we're just gonna see have to see how that works or if it was a typo. So I'm not really going to touch on that too much. Just know that you can still get more RP each game than you could in season 12. On top of that, they changed how assists work. Normally you would have 10 seconds after you did damage to someone. If someone else got the kill, you would still get credit for that kill as well up to 10 seconds. For next season, what they're doing is that they are going to change that to 15 seconds. So now up to 15 seconds, if you've done some sort of damage to them before they heal, then if the other, if your teammate gets the kill, you will also get credit for it. And even if they manage to get a kill again, remember there is still some sort of shared KP now, so you will still get partial credit for it anyway. Also, if you knock someone and their teammate manages to res them and your teammate knocks that person, you will still get to get KP out of that. A 15 second timer refreshes upon revivals. So even if someone on your team takes your kill from your knock after they got res, you will still get credit, which again, opens up the doors for more RP. Lastly, what they did is they kind of tried to fix third partying just a little bit. Honestly, I really don't feel like this change is that substantial. Honestly, I still think you're gonna get third party just the same amount as you would in season 12. I don't think it's gonna really change how often you get third party. But here's how the change works. So basically, if two teams are fighting and each team has some amount of players knocked, if one of those teams gets killed or eliminated, the players that they knocked will no longer be able to get stolen by a new team. Currently, the way that it is, is that if you kill someone who was knocked that was killed by another team that is no longer in the game, you could get the kill credit for that. Now, the way that it works is that if the other team that knocked the player is no longer in the game and you kill the knocked player, that kill will be voided. Nobody gets credit for it. And the reason for this is because they claim kills are earned and not given. At first, I wasn't really sure how I felt about it, but with that statement that kills are earned and not given, I kind of enjoy this change. At least they have some sort of reasoning behind it and really it does make sense. You shouldn't be able to clean up someone's mess and get complete credit for it. So instead, if they're not there, then no one gets credit, which is still okay. You still get all the loot. Lastly, they want to know that these changes are ongoing, that there is still potential changes that they could make or things that they could take away. Honestly, I think the way that it is right now is so good and I can't wait to play it. Maybe with playing it more, I'll think that maybe a few things need to get tuned down or even tuned up. And as it stands right now, I think that these changes are incredible and I congratulate Respawn for all of their work. They really hit the nail on this one. But if you enjoyed today's video, smash that like button. And if you want to come back and see more content like this, hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. And I will see you guys in the next video.